Okay, guys, I wanted to do another little demo for you real quick here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I wanted to show you how we could brush on little bits of detail onto our robot. And then somebody, a student, had a question about how to use the some of the transform options that are listed. So uh, what I'm going to do really quick is um, at this point right now in here, all I have is just copy and paste. I haven't gone in. I haven't really. I started to just a little bit the other day. I started to put in a couple little light values. You can see them right there. Okay, those are some of the differences that I did brushing in, but I'm going to go in in the demo, add a little bit more value structure to it, and then I'm also going to paint on some, you know, um, just some scratches, some dirt, some other good stuff like that, just by using simple brushes, and I can also use some uh, textures. So really quick, what I'm going to do before I jump into the transformation tool and go over that, let me bring up a, a new site here. Let's go to, I had a texture on my desktop and I threw it away yesterday. So let me go up and grab a new rust texture real quick here. And I'll just grab this guy here since I this is the one I had on my desktop before. Okay, so I'm going to grab it. Let's drag it here. There we go. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that and drop it in here as well. There we go. Okay, so I'll come back to that in just a second here. So... Um, let's talk about the transformation tool. Let's say really quickly, I want to grab part of these missiles that are, oops, zoom in on the wrong one here, part of these missiles that I have right here. So I'm going to come in here with my lasso, okay? Um, I'm just going to quickly go over it. I prefer to sort of erase when I, when I do this um, with my tablet. And I don't have my tablet hooked up right now, so I'm just going to do this by hand really quick here. I might actually be able to use part of that bracket right there. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this, copy that out of here, let's click on my original, I'm going to come over to where I want to put it, hit paste, okay, let's see what happened there, it didn't paste, so let me figure out why, let's go back again, come down here, copy, and paste, hmm, that's not good, let's try that again, oh, that's why, my bad have the wrong layer selected. Paste. Okay. So um, let's real quick, I'm going to turn off all my other uh, layers here. Let's take a look at transformation. Let's look at options that we have. And I thought I covered this with you guys. If I haven't, I apologize. Okay. When we go to transform and hit command T, it does a basic transformation for us, which is allows us to adjust scale. Okay. Um, However, though, you'll notice I can also grab one corner and squash it in accordingly as well. Okay, um, I can come back up under Edit while that transform is on there, even if it's off, and I can say Transform, and I have these other options that are listed: Distort, Skew, and Perspective. Okay, and Rotate. So what I can also do is with my mouse, once I've hit my transformation, I can right-click inside there and then go to Distort. Okay, or one of the other options. So what does Distort do? Stort allows me to grab one side and it keeps it together. This is great for if you have something that has to fit into a particular angle or perspective or along the side of a wall. Now this isn't the best example. The best example that I could give you for something like that would be, here I'll drag it and drop it real quick. Let's uh, come here. Let me create a new box here. Let's go to Google. Let me grab some, some roof tile. Okay roof tile real quick all right let's go to images here and uh, this is where I can I can take some type of detail this just happened to pop in my mind right now is if I have roof tile okay and if I grab and drag the let's let me click enter here there we go so I'm going to grab the roof trot one more time let's grab it that's not fun drag and drop come on all right so let's try it again let me try to do it another layer down here I don't know what's going on. Hold on, my my computer's locked up. I think for a second here. All right, this isn't good. One second, and nothing's working. Give me a second, guys. Let me figure out what's going on. Come on, it's staying on one tool. All right, hold on a minute here. That's okay. All right, sorry about that. So I finally got our window to pop back up here. So you can see I dragged this texture in here. Now, if I was working on a realistic film, <coughs> let's say, for example, if I was at DreamWorks, 
one of the things you're, you're required quite often to do is you have to texture 3D models. Okay, uh, especially with games these days, it's quite a common position that, that is sought after. So this is a good example of how I might transform something like this down like this. But then if I wanted to fit it on a roof, if I hit transform again, click inside it, and I go to um, start with skew. Okay, skew allows me to raise it up and down to match a particular perspective that might be happening. Okay, so I can also grab a corner, see, and adjust it in an alliance with the whole roof going back in one particular view of perspective. Okay, now um, let's say that's not what I wanted. Let's go look at it. Uh, we're taking a look at skew. Let's take a look at perspective. Perspective allows me to come in, see that, and adjust the ends to fit the perspective as it might be changing relative to converging back into one direction. So if I had a roof that was converging away from me, I would do that. If I had, let's say that wasn't the case, let's say if you get it like this right now and you're frustrated and you don't want it to be that way, hit a button, it'll ask you if you want to place it or not place it, hit don't place, and it'll go back to normal. Okay, go back to transform, right click on it, let's go back, we can go back, we did skew already where we just grabbed one end and modified it, or we could grab this end, modify it, or we can grab an end and, and slide it in a little bit closer. Okay, different options there. Okay. Again, if you don't like it, you hit the button, hit don't place, and then it goes back to normal. Let's go back to transform, right click on it, let's take a look at perspective. Perspective allows me to do the same thing, to grab, and you can see when I hold the, the selection arrow right here, you can see it gives me that option where it's telling me I can go up and down right now. Okay, so if I hold that over here, I don't get the arrows. You see they disappeared. If I come back to here, it gives me the arrows. So here I can come in and I can grab and it's going to affect each corner. Okay. Let's right click on this, let's go to distort. Distort does the same thing, but now it allows me to move one corner however I want to move it. Okay, None of the other corners are, are interactive with it. It takes a little bit of time, but you get used to it really quickly because you can quickly go in and modify something. And so I always think of distort allows me to grab any free point on there and manipulate it. Perspective is exactly what it says. It allows me to modify part of it and match it to a particular perspective. Okay. And then uh, my other option of skew is similar to perspective. It's skewing it and changing it, but it has a couple little other variables and allows me to grab a corner and move it into just a teeny bit. Okay? The other option is warp. Warp places a grid up on top of it. Okay? So this can come in handy um, selecting particular areas of a selection. Right now I have the whole entire uh, tile selected there. So warp really isn't the greatest adjustment here, but watch what happens. I could grow, go in and grab a point in warp, and I could bend it down or manipulate it. And then I have the, these Bezier curves. So then I could grab a curve, and I could twist the, this in and bend it in. Okay. So what's cool about this is if I had a roof line that was bending, I could grab these, and I could bend these in here, and I could get this tile structure to come pretty close to matching a rounded roof line if I wanted to, just by doing that really quickly. Okay. Now... Uh, enough of that. Let me go back here. Let's let me take this this particular version off. Now, when I'm working in here with a gun, this is where a warp can be of benefit to me because it allows me to bend things. Now, you guys also remember I showed you another type of transformation tool called the puppet warp. Okay, I'll cover that again in just a second. So, now in my basic transformation, I can hit Control T automatically, right click inside it. And let's say I want it to distort. All right. This allows me now to sort of bend the angle at which this is converging to a vanishing point. Okay, So let's say I right click on this, Command T again to transform. I go up here and uh, we did skew, which was going to the vanishing point. Right Now I'm going to go down this to distort. Distort's going to allow me to bring in one corner separately and it's going to totally change the look of this. Okay, So um, this is a benefit for me because when I'm transforming I might need to match this to a certain perspective that's on my the robot that you're working on. Okay. The center point is a, a rotating pivot point for you. So if I go over here and place it right there, and then I come back out and go back to transform or rotate, see it allows me to pivot around that particular point. Okay. So you can always move that point and put it to any other side, go to rotate, and it'll rotate off of that end as well. No. The only difference would be is, you know, if I come in here, 
here, I mean, let's hit, let me hit a, a button here. And I'm going to hit don't apply. It's going to go back to its original shape. So if I were to transform right now, and if I move this pivot point way over here, come over here and tell it to distort, I'm still distorting it the same way. Nothing's really changed. Okay. Uh, the only thing I really use the pivot points for is when I have to rotate a particular object and then I can click on it, rotate it, and I can rotate it over a certain vanishing point that I might need. Okay. So um, so in here I can go in and I can adjust that. So let's let's take this little piece that we have here. Okay, I think that's already in the paste memory. Let's come back here and go back to our wait a second here. Oh, it is right inside here. I'm going to turn that one off. Let's come back to my robot and turn this guy back on. So I, I have this. And let's say I want to put this over on this end. So first thing I do when I go is I'm just going to transform it and try to get it lined up to match that perspective. So first thing, the easiest way to apply this, it gets really confusing if you go right into distort and perspective and warp. Uh-uh. Start simple, baby steps. Grab the object that you want to manipulate, tr you know, transform it, Place it into a particular position. I just happen to be lucky that that's almost a perfect fit right there. Okay, so um, let me go in here. I'm going to zoom into it real quick. But that I could be thrown off on it because it's not quite. You can see if I go to rotate this like this, that's somewhat close there. Okay, now what I can do is if I wanted to make it a little bit larger, I can scale it up a little bit and I can sort of get it to fit in there. Okay, like so. Now, this is where... This is looking like a good intersection point for me. Let me erase some of this leftover hits here. Bear with me. I don't have my tablet. I'm just using the, the mouse real fast. Okay. So when I have this white along this, oops, this edge right here, I'm just actually going to do this with a lasso real quick here. Come along here, and I'm just going to take this and delete that. Voila. That's deleted there. Okay. I have a little bit there, but I can touch that up in a little bit. So... Now if I go to transform, see it could be a pain in the butt to get it to position right and have it exactly the way that I want it to be. So what I could do is if this feels like it's moving in the right direction for me, I can come back under transform and I can immediately go over to distort or skew. And see I can grab this and I can slide it over just a little bit. So I can distort it and get it to fit exactly the way I want. And right there, that feels pretty good. And even if this fronts off a little bit, I can slide this out, bring it down, bring it up and over real quick. I can make quick adjustments like that. I can take this layer, duplicate it, grab the other one that's here that's right next to it, grab that one. Now let's try this. What if I want to, um, I'm going to put it this way. I want to flip it the other way. So transform, right click on it, tell it to flip horizontally. It now flips the other way. Then I'm going to rotate it back in a position, scale it down. I'm going to make it look like a, another one that's a little bit smaller here that might be connected on the side right there. Okay. I need to adjust this a little bit. And there's, you'll notice, look at the lenses. This lens feels like it's in pretty accurate perspective. This lens is way off right here. Okay, so let me go in, let me erase a little bit of this white overspray that's on here to get this to blend in real fast. Okay, there we go. I get that to blend in. And now what I'm going to do, let's go back to transform. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to distort or skew. I'm going to start with distort first. See what happens if I move this around. That's not too bad. That feels like it's lining up. I'm going to come over to skew and see what happens. Maybe I need to grab this over here. Maybe I need to grab this end down and squash it. There. By squashing that end there, it's making the lenses look a little bit more... Uh, this is a little bit more of an oval shape. I have to fix this one right here. So I have a couple options that I could do. This one actually doesn't feel too bad. Now I'm starting to think that this one's off a little bit here. So what I can do is I could come in here and I could select this interior, okay, was on that layer. I'm going to go under transform, right click on it, and I'm going to start off with the skewer distorted perspective, okay. So I'm going to come in here, see if I grab that side up a little bit, pull them over, it makes them look a little bit larger. I can grab this, pull it out a little bit, okay. I can move this back into position, get them to overlap where I want them to be. I can go to the corner, right click on this, go back to scale, enlarge them back up a little bit to cover, hit return, deselect, and now I've modified trying to get those two ends to match there. And if I have a little bit of an edge right there, that's fine because that's something I could easily just clean up, oops, by erasing really quick, and same thing here. I can go along part of this edge here and erase this 
and I, oops, doing this with my mouse, so get that to sort of blend in there. Okay, there we go. All right. So while we're while we're talking here, just give me one second. I'm just going to reach in my bag and pull out the Wacom tablet and push it up. So you can see how I placed that little gun piece there off of a little missile piece that was that was available through the photo reference. Okay, quick, simple, easy, paste. And it takes a little bit. You can get used to some of those adjustments. And don't forget the porp, the I can't talk the puppet warp option that we have. Here, I'll do that really quick just to remind you. Okay, so let's come back here and look and see if I had another. Um, let's hit Command Paste again and see what happens. There, I have this other missile that's right there. Okay, let me take off. Let me keep the ones that I want. I want that one. I don't want eight. That eight's the new one here. So I'm going to grab the new one right here. I'm going to turn off all the layers that are underneath it really fast. Let's take a look at that just to remind you what happens. Puppet Warp is fantastic. I use that all the time. It saves me a lot of time with things. Now, all I have to do is have my model selected or a particular layer selected. In this case, all I have is this one instrument, this one little piece right here on the layer. So if I go down under Edit and I go over and find, you know what, where is it? Puppet Warp. It's right there under Edit above Transform. Puppet warp and it automatically assigns this three-dimensional grid to the base here. So all I have to do is click points. So if for some reason I had to bend something to get it to fit, that's great about puppet warp. I can come in here, I click once, click another time, click a third time. Anywhere I click is going to put down a point, an anchor point. Once I hold my marquee over that anchor point, it gives me the option to move that. And that will move that and adjust it towards a particular point that I had. So let's say I had to have some type of, of other curved uh, gun or, or scope in here. I could come in here and put some points in and I could try to try to modify it the best that I that I could and then I could come back in and I could paint on top of it and get that to fit in. So if I hit return, voila, now I have some type of bent cannon and who knows what that would fit. But point is is that you can manipulate any of the photos that you paste in and the great thing about that is you could take that car fender, the Lamborghini, and if it's not quite fitting your body uh, shape, you can just hit transform or puppet warp it and you can bend it. So some of you guys I noticed haven't done the hands yet, the fingers, some of you haven't finished the, the helmets, right? This is a great example by cutting and pasting, you can come back in. If the transform tools aren't working for you, you can easily go in and select it with the puppet warp tool and modify it really fast, okay? I mean, tremendous amount of that's a huge time saver here. You know what we used to have to do in the old days? We used to have to copy and paste it and move it in three different directions, move it into one layer, take stamp and try to blend it and then paint on top of it. Now you have puppet warp, okay, that takes just a matter of minutes, okay? Oops, let's not cancel that. So let me delete this layer real quick here. Okay, I have my tablet up now. Let's turn on my other layers. Let's make sure here. I didn't need, let's see what I have. Okay, so this is sort of where my robot's standing right now. I want to go in here and, you know, there's a couple little bits. I haven't really blended this right now. Let me see. Let's get rid of this other tube here. <coughs> Delete that. Okay, let's see what this was here. Oh, that was the one that we want that guy there. So I'm going to go ahead and commit to most of this right now. There. I have my rough. And that's what I've attached on the top of it so far. And I, I didn't finish some of this area in here, but that's fine for right now. And I didn't do part of the back leg. If I was in a real time crunch, you know what I would do for part of that back leg? I would come in here and I would select a bunch of this right in here. Okay. I would copy that and paste it. And I would bring that over here and I would just do this. I would transform it. I would get this in a particular position. Make it smaller. Get it to fit about there. Let me zoom in. Let's take a look at it. Turn the layer on and off. See what is overlapping where. Okay, so now I know I have some elements right here. Now I'm going to switch over to my my uh, Wacom tablet. I'm going to erase some of this right in here. Erase some of this. And since this is back behind the leg here, okay, um, I need to adjust these feet, by the way. Those are horrible. So let me, let me take the Move tool. I'm going to select them out. The feet are turning away from me. So what I'm going to do is see if I can't transform these guys, make it look like there's actually sort of a back plate behind them here, like this, okay. Uh, deselect, I'm going to go over and grab this shape right here, 
I'm going to move him over here to the other side as well. Let me transform this guy, get him in position to about here. That's actually pretty cool. It feels like a... Does anyone know what muscle that is in tendon that links up to the back of the heel? That if you cut it, you fall automatically. Achilles tendon, that's right. With that tendon gone, you automatically fall down to the ground. Okay. So now I'm going to come in here, just erase a little bit off of this, get this to match in part of the foot. And that actually works pretty good right there. <laughs> actually, go play the lotto. I'm getting lucky on my, my little demos here, right? So <laughs> I got that in there perfect. The only one thing I want to do, though, when I zoom out, guys, anyone know what it is? Atmospheric perspective. It's the same value structure right now as my legs on the left and on the right. So what I want to do, if I grab that layer right now, and I drop that layer down, and I thin it down just a little bit, Okay, I want to get it to lighten up and sort of blend in there. Now, what I just did in the opacity wasn't really working, so I'm going to try another option. I'm going to go to levels right now and see if I can't lighten it up just a little bit like this. Okay, that made it a little bit lighter. The legs in the front are darker. Then I'm going to see under a layer option here. I was going to, you know what, I'm not even going to get with that. I'm just going to drop the opacity down just a little bit, just like that, and get it to sort of blend in right like that. Okay, not bad, just like that. So I dropped it to 87%. It's a little bit lighter, not nearly as dark as what's in the front. And another option too, you know what, let's say I want to leave it at full 100%. What I can do is just come in here and I could erase a little bit. I can go down to like 10% and I could lightly go over a couple of areas that have lots of value in it. Which is the same thing as messing with the opacity. But now by doing it separate with the eraser, I can affect exactly... Uh, the type of control that I want to have over one designated area rather than having it affect the whole entire piece. Okay, That way I can you know, get it to fade off a little bit and what I can also do to darken it is I can grab this sort of darker black value right here go down to about 5%. Let me show you this on a separate layer and I'm just going to lightly sort of come in and draw on top of that. Okay. Oh, let me make sure. You know what? This is driving me nuts. There we go. Let's make sure we have black. There he is. There's a little bit of black coming out. I'm going to go to 10%. And I'm just going to lightly come on top of this here. See, and I'm just going to darken some of this right here. And if I darken this up, it's going to make it look like it's it's fading back a little bit. Okay. I wanted to lighten it up a little bit, but I'm trying to knock back my highlights. Does that make sense? So what I'm doing actually right now is I'm taking black, not darkening the blacks, but I'm going over the highlights and by doing that, it's going to make it look a little, not as nearly as intense, and it's going to make that leg sort of drop backwards and fall behind his body. Okay? There. So that's good enough for me right there. Let's see what happens if I take off that layer, if you notice any difference. There. You can see what I did. I just lightly adjusted it. So I'm going to go ahead again, and I'm going to commit to that. There. Now I have them all set up here. So now what I want to do, this is sort of the fun part for me where... If I have any plain edges inside my piece, which I do, if you see right here, that looks like a piece of plain paper. Okay, So there's a couple options that I can do right here, and I know this is getting pixelated because I didn't paint this super, um, it's not too much resolution on here. What I want, Actually, I'm going the right, wrong direction. I'm looking at the front of this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on a front to this. I'm going to give it thickness. So how do I do that? I select around and I come over here. I'm going to create a basic sort of thickness to it, like this. Okay. Select it. I'll put another layer up on top. That way I can quickly adjust it when I'm working. I'm going to take a darker gray like this. I'm just going to come along here right now. I have to readjust my opacity. There. And I've hit it with like a black right now. Okay, I'm going to hit Control h on my keyboard, which my ants are still there, but I'm hiding my lines. I like this because now I can see. Now, the black I put there works. See, it gives it thickness down here, but it's not just going to be pure black. I'm going to have variations in light because light bounces and travels. So watch. I'm going to come over here, take a little bit of white, hit 4 on my keyboard to drop down to like a 40% opacity, and I'm going to lightly hit across the top there. Do you see that? And that gives it that natural little blend of going from light to dark. Same thing back on the side plate right here. I can go down to like 20%. And I could come in right here sort of at the base and just even go a little smaller. And I could put what looks like a little highlight right there. You see that? And that's going to make it look like it's a little bit of metal. Okay? So now that sort of has a plate effect to it. It feels realistic. I can even grab my black, come back and swab a little bit more on the end right here. I can even get really picky. You can do edges like this. I can get up 
really close on the edges. And if I hit Control H, I can see my ants again. And I can just come along part of my edges. Now I'm a little bit low resolution to get too much detail on my edges here. But if I come in here sort of at the right point, you can see it darkening the edge right there. And what that's doing is it's really adding a little bit more. So look at what happens when I take the layer off. It looks like a flat piece of paper that's floating. I put the layer on and I create a little bit of value there. I'm going to hit deselect right now and zoom out. Okay. And I get some nice sort of thickness taking place there. Uh, what I don't like is the Lamborghini hood model right there. Okay. So how do I want to get rid of that real quick? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and commit to that. You know, before I commit to that, um, I'm wondering if I could use this, this layer that I made here really fast. So let me duplicate it. Okay. I'm all about time and saving time. So I can see if I can grab this guy right and transform him. See if I can put him on this lower piece right here. Now I wouldn't be on the back there. Why? Because that's behind. I'm looking at him from a front view. So I could have an edge thickness going across here. So let me do this right now. I'm going to come here, take my eraser, go into it, make sure I'm at 100% opacity. I'm going to come along, I'm going to erase this top, I'm going to erase this piece right here. And I'm going to go ahead and take this guy, right, transform him, get him in, into what would be like an edge right here. I'm going to just stretch him out, get him in a position about right there, hit return, go to V, move him into place about there. That's fine. Now, it's a little bit low res, so I have that sort of messed up edge on him, but I'm going to see if I can't clean that up just a little bit in there. Oops. Back up there for a minute. So I can do that. I can just come along with the lasso tool and go straight across and get any excess vertices. Not vertices, uh, they're pixels actually. I'm talking with my language after being in the previous class. So there, I put a little edge on that, really. You know, that, that really, uh, that simple and easy. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that layer right now and grab that. Let's transform him, see if I can fit him right up under that edge right there. Do you see that? Fits under right there, not too bad. Um, see if I can pull them out a little bit more, get them in, into place. You know what? I, you know what Photoshop needs that Maya has under the trans. There's so many people that are using kit bashing and using photos to blend their work in. Maya need. I mean, Photoshop needs the option that Maya has, where you when you hit the transformation tools, you can put it on either object or world setting. That's what they really need because the world setting is what it's permanently on right now in Photoshop, which is north, south, east, west. Whenever you hit transform, like on this object right now, it goes north, south, east, west, and it's permanent. It's perfectly plumb. If they had a separate setting in there that allowed you to click it to object, it would read the object pivot, and it would, it would go ahead and turn this box at an angle, and it would save you a lot of time for transforming. So whenever I have to do that, what I actually have to do if I want to get it really nailed on is I have to duplicate the layer that I want to transform it rotate it back to a horizontal position then hit transform again so I get a dead accurate rotation that way when I scale it it's scaling in the same uh, horizontal format okay so here I'm gonna go ahead put this in place get it right up here sort of on this edge just transform it just rotate it a little bit in there use my move tools in there that's pretty good. Come back, erase a little bit of the overspray that's right in there. Okay, and I'm going to take these layers, merge them all together. Let's zoom out a little bit and see what I did. I just put a little bit of edge on there, and I might go ahead and go into levels right now, and I'm going to darken it up a little bit more, just a little bit like that, so it reads as a dedicated edge. Okay? All right? Now, check this out. Little little quick technique here. See how I have those selected? Someone showed me another wonderful technique way to do this, and I forget how to do it, but I'll show you my way, right? If I want to quickly put a selection tool around what's in that layer right now, so what's in this layer? I'm going to move it real quick. Just that, right? Let me show you how you can do that. You know what you do? You just take, you hit Command-All, select the whole entire canvas, okay, hit V, hit the Move tool, and it selects what's inside your layer real quick. Somebody else, I think Hassan, there's another way where you can select that like option and you touch the inside view of here and it selects automatically what's in the layer. So, uh, huh? Control, maybe that's what it is. So let's try that. If I hit control and click it, ah, that's the way. 
And you know what? It might be different on a Mac. Mac might be the command option, and that's where I get confused is jumping between both platforms. So thank you, Ryan. So control and click, and that's another way to select it. So why would I want to select it right now? I just blackened it. I can hit control H. I've hid my ant lines, right? Now I could come in here. Look at that bright highlight I have there. I'm going to take that, drop down to like 10% opacity, and come in here and brush a little bit of that right on the front here. Brush a little bit of that back here. Maybe a teeny bit like right in here. Just to have a little variation, a little bit of difference. Okay. Deselect. Now, those are things that are important to me. You guys might not notice a difference, but I notice a difference when I look at pieces. Okay. So, you know, right now I've been copying and pasting, and, and I really like how this is coming out because I have a real definitive edge to that. It feels like a plate that's covering part of the rest of my uh, interior decorations in here. Okay. Now, I, I never did finish the arm and some other detail that I would put in here, but that's all right because I've already received the grade for my project. Okay. So I've already paid my dues. Okay. Um, the funny thing is, is that I'll probably be doing this over the winter break because I'm going to be doing a bunch of freelance for some uh, animation companies. So look at that. See right there? That almost fits in there perfect, right? So I'm going to come up here. Let's take erase. I'm going to actually, yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and erase this off right here. Go right across there. I'm going to take that value. Look at that. Lines up there almost perfectly, just like that. So I'm going to hit transform. See if I can get that to come out a little bit more. Like about there. Let's hit return. That's not too bad. Okay. Um, I get a little bit of a leftover edge there. So what I can do is select just this area right here. And I'm going to hit transform there. And see if I can stretch that out a little bit. And then move it back down into place. A little bit more. There. Hit enter. Deselect. And there. Now I put a little shadow value on there. A separate layer. So I can come back in. I could go to levels. I can lighten it up. Or I can darken it. Whichever one's going to make it feel better. And that's, by the way, this is also a great way to create highlights. So check this out. Why don't I take what I have right there, okay, this layer? I'm going to duplicate them, okay? It's in black now, so I'm not going to see it. I'm going to move it up on top a little bit there. Then I'm going to go into levels, and now I'm going to slide my slider the other way, and I'm going to create. Wait, it didn't do it. I'm going to turn it into pure white. Yeah, make a highlight. See that? Now, since I have that as a dedicated highlight, now I can come down with my opacity and I can fade them in. You see how I just did that real quick? I took the black shadow, I duplicated it, I went into levels, I slid the slider over. I'm just using the tools that are afforded, that are given to me from Photoshop to quickly save myself time. I could have gone in there and I could have painted it and got all nitty gritty and, and did a selection and did that, but it's like, let the program work for you, right? So. Copied and pasted the shadow, put it on top, changed it to white, dropped the opacity down to 37%. Okay, let's look at the difference here. I now have a nice white dedicated highlight that goes right along the top of that with the shadow on the bottom. So let's take a look at when I take off both options there. It looks like what? A flat piece of paper. It looks like just a piece of metal with no thickness. So these are, this is sort of the next level that you guys should be working on on your robots. Okay is coming in and adding some of this detail, making parts look like they're, they're anchored down and they have thickness and they're tangible and they're touchable. Do You don't want to make everything look like it's completely floating, okay? So let me come over here real quick. Let me commit to the layers that I have here. Hit Control E. I'll turn it off and on. Look at the difference. That's where I was right now. Let me move this over, make sure it's in the center here, okay? That's where I was and that's what I just did in a couple minutes. I put those extra values in there, and it really gives some thickness to my, my pieces. Okay, And then I'm going to go ahead. I don't want to have a million layers. I'm going to commit to it. Hit Control-E. It's now all on one layer. Okay, So <clears throat> now the next part that I would sort of do is, is I have a really pretty clean robot here. And this is the fun part of either painting on or coming in and brushing and painting like ricochets, bullet holes, rust, stuff like that. So, you know, if I wanted to do a bullet, what I would do is I would come over here. There's actually a couple brushes you can grab that are like, they're actually, I saw some on I think Brush Easier on DeviantArt. They actually had brushes for like laser blasts. Like if something had been blasted and a laser hit, somebody already figured out 
they made a brush for, but it's actually pretty easy because all they're doing really is this. Is they're just taking, I have a separate layer here. I'm going to swab some black. I'm going to get a nice soft brush like this, okay? And all you do is you want to come in here and just sort of tap in one area to get something like a dedicated black and then streak it in one particular direction, okay? I'm going to go ahead and switch to a little bit more detailed brush that I have here. And by doing that type of streak, I can make it look like it's been a gun blast. Do you see that? And if I get a little too heavy in one particular area here, what I'm going to do is just come in with my eraser, drop down to 10%, and just come in and tap a little bit of that center black right there. But you see how I did that? It looks like it's been, that looks like a, a round or a, I don't know, a, a, what do you call it, a tank missile shot out and hit it and bounced off the side of it. Okay. I'm going to actually add a little bit more black, go back to about there. That way I have some contrast. See, and I could come in and I could put that anywhere I want is a little detail in it. So I could come in and I could put that on the side of that plant that panel. Okay. So let's let's do that to a couple. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that right there. And I'm gonna put another one up here. I'm gonna transform them, make them a little bit smaller, rotate them a little bit in the opposite direction. Alright, come over here, boom. Okay. And then I might brush in a little bit more detail around that to make it look a little real. So they don't look quite too similar. I'm just gonna tapping my brush here, putting a little bit of black there, a little bit of black there. There, now it looks like I have some real definitive, you know, detail element of something striking it and hitting it, okay? So, I mean, that's just the beginning of my, sort of my detail layer. Let's come over here. Um, let me merge those layers real quick, guys. Let me drop this back in here. Okay, let's take a look what I have here. So I'm going to, I have those two separate. I'm going to go ahead and merge them. I'm going to go ahead and label it as Gun Blast right now. And I'm going to save that. Why? Because I can still duplicate that and move that to other areas of my robot and save myself a ton of time. So I like, whenever I do textures, don't ask me why, but I like to do them on the side separate. So I might come over here and I'll just say, you know what, I want to go for maybe something with a little bit of rust. So I'll start with a little bit of this red. Okay. And I'm going to go, I have a, a nice texture brush here that I've sort of created that's a real basic if I bring up F5 okay it just has a bunch of different settings and um, I'm sorry F7 let's bring up the no F5 let's bring up brush presets here brush it has shape dynamics a dual brush which means it has another texture locked inside it it has transfer on so and I already mentioned did a demo for you guys that on brushes where you create your own brushes and <clears throat> so I have some that I already use on a regular basis for texture so I put a little bit of red there I'm gonna come over I'm gonna range my slider up I'm gonna go down to a little bit of orange so I'm gonna decrease my brush put a teeny bit of orange right in here okay I might get it a little bit more saturated in here okay make it look like it's sort of running like it's metal okay um, let me see what else I want to do. Let's add on. Uh, let's go back to our color picker. I want a little bit of yellow in there. That's that's green yellow. There we go. Like a nice bright yellow. A little bit of a highlight maybe in here. Just a little bit of yellow up on the top there. Okay. And now I have this separate. See that? So I could take that and I could drag it to a part of my robot. And I could make it look like maybe he's had a little bit of a a leaky hydraulic right there. And there's some fluid or juice that's not juice, but what do you call hydraulic fluid that's leaked across his leg, right? And so right now it's, there's a lot of opacity to it. And I did that on purpose, but I could quickly come in and I could adjust this to where I want it to be. So let's say I want to put it right there. So what am I going to do? I'm going to duplicate the layer temporarily just to save it, come back to this one here. I'm going to transform them, scale them down a little bit, get them up right about in here, widen them out a little bit, hit return. Okay. And he's still a little too open too much opacity there so I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna drop down part of my levels right there and get them to blend in just a little bit like that okay that's one option I have the other option I have is I can come into one of these layer options and I can put them on like to overlay 
Doesn't really do much. Soft light will probably be nice. I didn't do much on soft light either. Hard light. Hard light puts a little, look at that. That actually fits in there pretty good, doesn't it? With that little yellow hitting the highlight. And then I get that red underneath there. It makes it feel like it's just like a, a gun, I was going to say gun metal that's been heated. Okay. That's what happens sometimes when firearms, I remember seeing World War II movies, some of the firearms get a little rust or a little heated and stuff, you know. You know where I learned a lot of this, guys? When I was in seventh grade. Hold on one second. Let me pause for just a sec. Okay. So where I was saying where I learned this, I learned a lot of this, is when I was a kid, I made models. They had a Japanese manufacturer, T Tamaya, I believe, that made wonderful little tanks. And I used to glue my tanks up. And I used to spray them all one color, and they looked too real. And then somebody, and then I was lucky. I didn't even know what the heck I was doing. I used to take a brush, and when I put paint on it, it came on too wet. So I would dry the brush out and then come back and stamp it. That's a technique in traditional oil painting called dry brush. Where you take a dry brush, and you just take a little bit of pigment on it, and you come back and you stamp in little bits of detail. Same thing I'm doing in Photoshop right now. Okay, so you could see how I applied a little bit of that right there. It added up, you know, gave a nice little effect. Let's say also for rushed, I could take any other numerous brush that I might have. What if he has blood splats on his feet? Not to gross you out or anything, right? But let's just go in here with like a number five. And, oh, deselect. Let me see if that was it. Okay, Photoshop isn't working again. Oh, that's why. I'm on hard light. I need to create a new layer. My mistake there. And so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab. Uh, these are some wonderful brushes that I, I got actually from an artist named Shadi Sadafi, and I actually have manipulated them a little bit more. And so, what's going on? 100%. Okay, why is my layer not working? Normal, 100%. 100. Deselect. I hit brush. Oh, that's why. Yep. There. So now I can come in here pencil some of that in here. I can have some real definitive, it looks like blood little spatters around them, like that. Not too much though. Again, I always do it on a separate layer. So that way I can hit erase real quick. I like this eraser, which is the number 36 charcoal in standard brushes. I like it with the wedge edge. And I could come in here and now take erase and I could lightly come in and erase some of this off here and get some of that blood to sort of blend in. I could even take it off of the cracks that are in there and that really fits the foot well so that's one thing I was going to do let's do the next thing I had let me pull this off I had a, a rust texture that I grabbed from the internet here real quick let's back up on here let me click here okay nope so I'm gonna have to do this really fast let's drag it and drop it and open it and here and there we go so I have this now I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna transform this okay problem is I can't see the ding thing so I'm gonna have to hit um, minus to zoom out there we go transform it and I'm gonna put this over part of my let's say all of my guy right now and I'm gonna go in here and drop this into a multiply or overlay or soft light mode and see what it does right there guys some magic that happens it go in, it goes in and it helps unite my whole photo okay however though now I would go in and I would subtract and minus off of it okay this acts as a nice blending agent. When I'm at Cal State Fullerton, Cliff Cramp does this, and I, it's something that I had learned a little bit from before then, but he does this in a painting. But what he'll do, he doesn't do a texture. He'll, take, he'll do a painting, and then to unify the whole painting, he'll go grab, it's a great idea, he'll grab a whole render of, like, the universe, of, like, the Hubble Space, space Scope, Telescope, right? Space Scope. Telescope, right? He'll take that render and he'll put it on a layer and he'll lightly blend it into the painting and erase parts and it helps you create some unity and bring the whole thing together. Okay. However, though, I wouldn't rely on just the photo. I would also be doing what? The textures, the edges. So what did I start? I put the edges, I put highlights on, I painted on, I put some rust here on the side. I remember I duplicated that layer, which is right here. So I might come over and grab that layer right now and move it over. Let me, oh, come on. Let's try that again. I might grab that over. I could put it up here. I could transform some of that up there and make it look like he's been eating mortar oil or something. I could, you know, um, lightly blend that in. I can go to erase right now. I could erase in the mid sections, erase at about 50%. 
Oh, is that our time limit? Okay, thanks, guys. And I could get that to blend in. I like that. I thought the robot was coming to get me or something for a minute there. So I'm going to put it on hard light right now like that. I'll leave it alone. But then look at what happens when I blend in that final texture, and I'm not done. Okay. Now I would come into that texture, and I would, first of all, I need to transform the texture and get it to fit on the whole entire piece like that. And then, and it's way too strong of a texture right now. I need to come in here and I need to erase it and get it a little bit lighter. And what I would prefer to do is I would erase parts of it. So let me do a leg real quick. Give me another minute and we'll stop. Erase. I'm going to come in here with erase, go down to about 10%. And I'm just going to come along some of this, maybe 20%. See, and I'm going to erase some of that, get that to blend in where, so it's only on the top panels. I'll erase some of that off of there. I want that highlight to pop. I want the highlights to pop on the metal here and here. So I'm going to erase that off. But I like how it blends into sort of the back leg there, just a little bit in there. I like how it hits the hoses, okay, there. So that, that feels pretty cool. A little too strong up there, so I'm going to erase some of this, blend it in. Okay, so you guys get the, the picture, the point, right? I'm doing it to blend it in to create the best effect possible. Up here, way too strong. I'm going to erase it off my middle. I'm just going to go up to like 70% opacity, erase most of this off the middle, drop down to like a 20 get some of this in here to blend, take it off there, take it off the face, take it off right in here, okay? Come in here, I can hold shift down and erase going sideways. Way too strong here, get that to blend in there a little bit, a little bit here, a little there. And you can see it really starts to work and adds a lot to a finished piece. Look at what it did here. See how it unified all that? It made him look like he's got this rusty end, but it's still way way too strong of a photo reference right now it just feels like rust and it's way too strong so I would really dull that down and just let's just real quick and then I'll wrap this up 30 percent come in erase it just a little bit of it across like that erase some of the tip so it's not on there erase a little down here drop down to 10 or 20 this is why your hand needs to always be on the keyboard and adjusting back and forth that feels pretty good very last thing I would do, I'd put another layer on top. I call this my blend layer. I grab a light brush of some kind, and what I do is I lightly come in and I take some, some values that, that are color, and I would lightly blend some of this in here. So I'm going to come in here where it's all white and put a little bit of that blended across there. Blend a little bit on the side here, a little bit down. I might come in here with some more of this white color that's right in here, streak that across there so it looks like that that hydraulic arm is connecting to something. I might connect another one in here somehow, make it look like there's another hydraulic in there. Um, I might swab some of this darker rust color and put a little bit of that on the edge right here on this panel, paint it in a little bit. Again, little bits of detail that I'm now manually painting in to get these layers to blend up completely. So there's really three, four processes. I put I put edges, highlights on. After the edges and highlights, I came in, I painted some textures, number two. Number three, I blended photo texture in. Number four, very last step, I come back and I, and I they then paint on top of that and blend a couple little pieces. And that's it. I'm finished and I'd be done. Um, this is okay. I still feel like it, I could easily put another two hours into it and really make it, knock, knock it out of the park. Okay, but this is okay right now for our demo because you guys are going to kill me if I don't produce it on time, so I'm going to end it right now and get it going, okay?